r slash fat logic. Tuesday baby Bat Adams brings us the weirdest flex they've ever seen. Someone writes, Took a large shirt out of a skinny girl's hand at a thrift store today. This one's for the fat girls. <laughs> Mr. Tuesday Night replies, I acted like trash at a thrift store today. Awkwardinator adds, Reminds me of the comments when Virgie Tovar stole a muffin off someone else's table like a dog going after unsupervised turkey at Thanksgiving. And they post a link to it. Virgie Tovar writes, I'd like to make a fat girl confession. I went to my favorite coffee spot and they had run out of their delicious plump muffins. And I was bummed, but I ordered coffee anyway and went to sit down on the little bench outside. Just as I sat down, a couple left and sitting right there on this little plate was a complete muffin. Untouched. The last muffin. Now, being that it's Santa Fe, people leaving perfectly good food is pretty typical. So I take this as a gift from the universe, and then the couple came back. You know, they probably just went to the bathroom, and she didn't even check to see where they went. They looked at their plate in consternation. Man, I can't believe it's gone already. And then simultaneously we all look at each other, and then down at the muffin which is cupped between my hands, my mouth stuffed with an enormous bite, like a squirrel, and then they walked away. Someone replies, Heart, this is the cutest. Someone else, survival of the fittest. Another, oh my god, LMAO, that's great. <laughs> oh, I love this. You're wonderful, Virgie Tovar, just made a really bad day brighter. And despite stealing food off someone else's plate, I'm sure Virgie Tovar has said that sugar is not addictive. If you can't resist grabbing unguarded food, you're either very poor, in which case it's understandable, a dog, in which case you're not too bright, or you're addicted. From Booty Chicago, I made a joke about skipping dinner on my Insta. My girl called me racist and anti-feminist. Lol. Good for them. I'm not going to tiptoe around things because other people can't handle them. My Insta is for me and me only. People need to take care of themselves. I'm not responsible for someone else's relapse. And technically racist considering the stats of how disordered eating affects others? This is very privileged of you. Nope, I'm not racist for making a joke about skipping dinner. Gentletonberry replies, She needs to step away from social media for a bit. She's in a serious bubble if she thinks that makes you racist, or is toxic enough for you to lose your job. Own Scheme brings us Things that are not meals. Coffee. Leafy green salad. Eggs. Moosley bar. For those not in Europe, that means cereal bar. Piece of fruit. Protein shake. Kangaroo. Eat intuitively. No, not like that. The undead mushroom. Moralizing food is bad. Unless I do it, of course. Open breadfruit brings us. Went to get a neuropsyche val. And the evaluator asked if I like to eat junk food, because what is a healthcare appointment without some fat phobia for seasoning? It's also very funny how some healthcare practitioners deflate or get embarrassed once you let them know, however subtly, that their fat phobia is not okay. All I said in response was, I don't use terms like that, I don't moralize food. And she was sputtering, lol. Let's be honest, she's probably not experienced enough in dealing with idiocy, yet. She'll learn. And the very next day, they post this picture. Behold, the new pig bowl in my living room filled with bags of famous Amos. For those people not American, famous Amos is little rock-hard chocolate chip cookies that are literally the definition of junk food. Nabumi explains what the doctor should have said. Okay then, do you eat processed, calorie-dense, and nutrient-deficient food? Every law brings us... I've talked about this more in depth on my erotic art account, but I get so frustrated seeing artists who will draw fat people, or even have fat characters they regularly draw, though this seems less common, but have no understanding of or willingness to engage with fat politics. You should care about the fat people that actually have to exist in this world, not just fatness as an aesthetic or as a trait to give your character. Good Grab replies, Fat activist, Fat people need representation. Artist, Draws fat person. Fat activist, not like that, you fat phobe. I cut off the end of the next one, so I'm going to give it a couple of different endings. Cholinergia adds, 
If you give a mouse a cookie, he'll call you fatphobic for not giving him three. If you give a mouse a cookie, he'll call you fatphobic for not also giving him a soda. From Naked Lobster. They're using the meme where the brain starts off dark and gets progressively brighter. The dark version. BMI is BS because muscle weighs more than fat. Slightly glowing. BMI is BS because it was invented by a racist astronomer. Glowing a lot. BMI is BS because lots of fat people are metabolically healthy. And the final one where it looks like they have ESP, but also their skull is missing. BMI is BS because it's used to discriminate against and harm fat people. Tidy Rope replies, Not sure how BMI is used to discriminate against and harm fat people. Medical procedures, if you have a BMI limit, is for your safety. Jobs, like the Army, have a BMI limit so you can be ready to deploy, engage, and destroy enemies of the USA in close combat. Cops should have a BMI limit and a fitness test on the regular, like the Army, so they can stay ready to give foot chase to suspects. Something I won't regret also replies, once again vilifying Idolfe Quetelet. Quetelet was a polymath. He made significant contributions in meteorology, astronomy, mathematics, statistics, demography, sociology, and criminology. He was likely no more or less racist than any other 19th century Belgian. All of his works are in the public domain. I challenge those who make the assertion that he was racist. Quote the relevant statements in his body of work. Additional trash brings us. I've been on my intuitive eating journey for about two years now, and I've just been diagnosed with diabetes. So now how do I go about supporting my health without subjecting myself to legalism? Legalism? What the hell are they talking about? Perfectionism? And diet culture again. As Galatians 5.1 says, Sorry if I said that wrong. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Paws off the risotto. I guess Jesus spending 40 days fasting in the desert was a mistranslation. He actually spent 40 days eating dessert. Do the hokey pokey. But did he go into starvation mode? If he did, then he's going to gain all the weight back, plus extra. Jesus, don't give yourself an eating disorder. Everyone knows that if you don't eat constantly, you get anorexia. OMG, today I learned Jesus had an eating disorder. Elmir2000 brings us. Someone posts, I think on Instagram, When people on public weight loss journeys start inevitably gaining the weight back. Then I assume there was a picture of someone making a face. But r slash fat logic doesn't allow pictures of people, so that was cut. Various people replied. One person wrote, Crazy, I lost 120 pounds a year ago and haven't gained any back. It's almost like I've chosen to not start eating in a calorie surplus again, so I don't gain. Someone replies, it's almost like you're the exception and not the rule. Most people end up back at their set point weight regardless of eating habits within a couple years. After those two crazy people, one nice person replies, Don't listen to the people who failed to do what you accomplished. Great job. But then the evil people come back. It took me five years to gain it back, so just wait. The nice person adds, I failed so everyone else will too. Many people maintain weight loss for life. Sorry you gave up on yourself. It's not failure, it's just biology. Give it time. <laughs> You'll find all that weight you lost. And the nice person one last time. Well, LMAO, what a disgusting, hateful, miserable thing to say. Do the hokey pokey replies to all that. I don't know why the thought of people failing at something they worked really hard to achieve brings these people so much joy. Dualist pirate. They have to constantly and strongly reinforce that they are not the problem. Otherwise, that would mean their misery is of their own doing, which is much more difficult to accept. With every person who succeeds, they become more of a failure. Brought to us by Hooligan Jetta. This is a conversation, supposedly. Nurse, also fat. Let's get your weight. Me, no thanks. Nurse, concerned. Do you weigh at home? Me, cheerfully, nope. Nurse, very confused. What do you do then? Me, deep breath. Brief explanation of weight neutral health. Deep breath was not in parentheses. So they literally said it out loud, apparently. Much like a bad actor saying aloud, exit stage left. 
Nurse, excited. You can do that? Me, yep. Gives resources. That rookie guy. Ah, another graduate of Google U enters the world, finds it scary, and lies their butt off, pretending to be more important than they are. Delicate Radar brings us. The original comment was pretty offensive, so you might want to skip this one for your own mental health. You feeling excluded from aspects of life because you suffer from a mental illness and are low self-esteem is not the same barrier as being literally excluded from aspects of life due to systemic and interpersonal fat phobia. For example, fat people are denied access to health insurance, life insurance, are denied medical care, or are overlooked for jobs and for promotions for not looking right. Frolicking Depression replies, Oh, please. These people make me sick. I was obese when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I'm not obese anymore. But I will always have bipolar disorder, and there is nothing I can do about it, unlike my weight. And my mental illness does have an effect on my ability to get a job, to get life insurance, to join the military, and to buy something I can't talk about here. I haven't seen a person deny that for being fat yet. Also, you think fat people are denied medical care? Try getting anyone to take anything you say seriously after a psychotic episode. Shapoopy brings us. Apparently, they're a fan of the musical The Music Man. Understanding weight. What you think determines your body shape and size. It's a pie graph. 80% diet, 20% exercise. What actually determines your shape and size? 60% genetics. 13% hormones and health, 13% food and movement, 13% other stuff you can't control. Educational ad replies. This is literally disproven by Nikocado Avocado and most other once thin people who gain weight, or fat people that lost it. They all end up looking naturally fat or thin once the weight changes and their body adapts. Nut powder guillotine brings us. Someone writes. Not only that, but calories themselves aren't an even number a lot of the time. They vary about 10% from what is labeled. Someone replies, And our bodies take varying amounts from food, too. A 300-calorie bagel might be 280 for one person and 200 in another. Uh, if you're only absorbing 200 calories from a bagel that's marked 300 calories, you probably have some serious issue that you need to see a doctor about right away. And none of this would explain why diets don't work, because you can't get more calories from a bagel than are in the bagel. No one's ever going to get 500 calories from this 300-calorie bagel. Gentleton Berry brings us, dislocated my knee at the gym a couple of days ago, and then got distilled fat logic in my inbox from a friend. More details and comments. Their so-called friend wrote, This is where your internalized fat phobia has gotten you... Ugh. They spell your as you are, and they spell you as just the letter U. I feel like I already know everything I need to know about this person, but let's continue on. Maybe if you hadn't lost all that weight so fast, then your knee wouldn't have crapped out on you like that. I'm sorry, I know it really hurt, but maybe this is the wake-up call that you need. Slaving away at the gym and disordered eating to suppress your set point is gonna mess you up. I feel like I barely know you these last two years... You've gone from being a friend to being just another fatphobic gym bro. So poopy describing your old self as obs and posting before and after photos of losing weight, knowing how that makes me feel? I supported you when you came out to your parents, but it's clear to me now that it was a one-way street as far as allyship goes. I hope you learn a lesson from this. Peace. They use the peace sign emoji. Jettleton Berry adds more details. Friend of 10 plus years dropped this on me the other day after I dislocated my kneecap in a freak accident at the gym. I was getting up off the floor after finishing a plank. Over the last two years, I've lost a lot of weight and changed my exercise habits, but I'm not disordered. I lost 71 pounds over 18 months and hit my target weight. I calorie count roughly to keep track of my habits, trying to stay at maintenance. And if I go over a certain weight, I restrict a little to stop things getting out of control, then return to my maintenance again once I'm back down to that. I go to the gym twice a week, PT session and one group class per week, swim, and also do outdoor hiking with friends. I still get takeaway pizza and eat candy sometimes, just in moderation. God, I hate that I need to justify myself this much. 
For most of this time, I haven't posted about my exercise habits or my weight on my social media because I was scared of receiving exactly this message. But a couple of weeks ago, my personal trainer, a badass lady who has helped me learn to lift weights and all sorts of other stuff I never thought possible, told me I should be proud of myself and share my success with my friends online if I wanted to. So I did, with before and after photos and my My Fitness Pal progress chart. And most folks cheered me on, sent me messages saying, wow, well done, you look and sound so much happier, etc., etc. At the time, I didn't receive any angry or disapproving messages from friends, who I know are fat activists, and I was super relieved. Their silence was a bit awkward, but that was it. Then, post-knee dislocation, I wake up to this in my Instagram inbox. I'm not going to lie, it made me tear up in frustration and genuine sadness. This person was my friend. But apparently that friendship was conditional on me being fat. Fudge, I'm just really upset. It's like talking to a fat logic bingo card instead of the person I love so much. Gentletonberry, your friend needs serious mental help. No real friend would wait around for their friend to make a mistake and then pounce on them the second that they do. That speaks of some serious problems in their mind. Love Dove Bunny brings us. Trigger warning. O word. Medical fat phobia. COVID. Calorie mention. I was reading this article about fat phobia in Norway, and I'm confused by this. For those not looking at the screen, the person is not capitalizing anything, even the first word in a sentence, the word I or Norway, and they're not using punctuation properly. They start off by talking about how badly fat people are treated just for being fat, but then later talk about the obesity epidemic and high-calorie temptations. I also googled one of the doctors mentioned, and holy hand grenade of Antioch, the first article that came up was the obesity epidemic is just as bad as the COVID pandemic, where that doctor said we should treat these two subjects equally because obesity is more dangerous than COVID. Like what the man-eating bunny? How can you talk about the discrimination fat people face and the complications of weight loss and then in another article say that the existence of fat people is just as bad, if not worse, than COVID? And this is a supposed expert on obesity. Five, no three, this country, dude. I like a clever pun, replies. Oh, this is relevant to me as an obese person living in Norway. Norwegians are a super active people. A portion of their culture is utterly ingrained in fitness. We have a wonderful government program where people who are disabled, unemployed, pensioners, etc. can get a super cheap $60 a year gym pass. All the equipment is there. They offer classes. Some centers even have pools. I swear there is nothing more motivating than being a 25-year-old struggling through the Zumba routine that the 80-year-old grannies are breezing through. But nutrition-wise, oof da, that's a lot harder. You can try and go through the obesity clinic, but the wait line is months long. I didn't go through it, but I have two friends who did. I assume they'll help teach you nutrition and how to cook healthier meals. Nobody's going to buy and cook the meals for you, though, and doctors aren't going to fall for the I'm not here about my weight BS. If you come into the office and say your knee hurts with a BMI of 40, they'll tell you to lose weight. If you don't like that, switch doctors or go private. The public sector doctors don't have time for your don't weigh me cards. Not like I've ever been weighed in a Norwegian doctor's office. Finally, language. Norwegian is a very limited language in terms of words itself. Yeah, they're going to use words like obesity and calories because that's the words they have. I've studied Norwegian enough to know that's not exactly true. If Norwegians need a word and they don't have it in their language, they just steal it from English. Blind gynecologist brings us some sanity. I'm sitting with the changes I need to make for my long-term health and realizing we need better discussions around fatness. Not all weight loss is rooted in anti-fatness. I say that as a middle-aged woman whose weight gain in the last decade is impacting my health. Middle age for women can be hard on the body, and while I was trying to just focus on exercise and wellness, it isn't enough. Again, we need more nuanced conversations on weight loss. The reality, as I'm learning, what worked at 30 or 35, even 40, does not necessarily hold true at almost 50 and beyond. As I said last night, the bill is coming due for me. Until now, my blood work has always been fine. Numbers great. Now, not so much. Joint health is also another issue as we age, and a place where extra weight can impact us. CC replies, So many younger fat activists are going to reach this point in 20 plus years and realize what damage they've done. Sadly, there were no de-chonkers posted this week. And so another video comes to an end. 
Thank you very much for making it this far. I was looking at my members list this week, and I was surprised at how many people are members. I want to thank you all very much. I truly appreciate it, and I know you don't have to support me. Extra special thanks go to Emmett McNally, Rig, Cupcake or Death, MMC, Story Story, Megtran2000, Cly, That One Guy, and Laura Christine. And very quick thanks go out to Sonia C, Courtney Kreps, Jenny G, Dalf Malk 65, Just a Girl, No, Caroline Han, Ash, John's Daughter, Dismerart, Gina Senna, Sodium Cyanide, Starry Pajani, Chris in Real Life, and Olympic Grade Lurker. If you're still here, consider clicking like and subscribe. And if you really want to support me, consider becoming a member. Members at the max level get one mini bonus Fat Logic video every two weeks if I can find material for it.